lost the war, did I? I said we lost the battle. And I was referring specifically to the kabuki play of Hillary Clinton's hearing last week, so-called hearing, before the uh, the Stalinist uh, committee, the fake committee, that made believe it was grilling her when it wasn't doing, when it was doing no such thing. Shame on Trey Gowdy. He had me fooled. We lost the battle, not the war. Why people read the headlines and not the story. It was on this morning, the biggest headline that I've seen. Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. The emails came pouring in. Savage has given up. There's no hope. If we've lost Savage, we've lost it all. Well, there lies the problem. People only read the headlines. They don't read the story. The real story says I haven't given up. I have great hope. We haven't lost it all. We can win this war. But you ask me what war am I referring to? It's the war for the heart and soul of this nation and the rest of Western civilization, which is under assault by the government itself. I lay it all out in Government Zero. I want to tell you something. My book is not complaints, 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 complaints. It's solutions, 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 solutions. 41 action plans to save America. I'm not a defeatist, as my competitors may have you believe. There's an extremely telling picture of what is happening in Europe right now and how it will affect America very soon unless Barry from Honolulu is sent a very clear message. If you go to michaelsavage.com, there's a picture I have. I don't know where they got it from. It looks like army ants invading a nest. It stretches for tens of miles of Muslims pouring into Europe, walking through the wheat fields, marching triumphantly without firing a shot because as I said to you last week and this is very serious business Hitler invaded other nations to impose the Germanic and Nazi views upon them Merkel and Obama are invading their own nations in order to impose third world I wouldn't even say views upon us just impose the third world and crush out everything good in this nation I stand by those words as you all well know, my great new book is out tomorrow, Government Zero. And you know what a momentous week this is going to be for me. But it's really not about me. And I have to repeat it again until you finally get it through your most cynical views. And I'm as cynical as you are. You know, I'm really cynical. I don't trust anybody or anything. I'm sorry, that's the way I am. There are people who trust everybody and everything. They're called Pollyannas. And then there are people who trust virtually nobody nor anything they read. They're people like me. I've come to see everything as a lie. And so how do you tell the truth? How do you decide what's real? How do you know what to do? Well, you have to decide that for yourself. I can't tell you what to believe and what to, what to do. I can tell you this. Common sense would dictate that no nation on earth has ever willingly turned itself over to a foreign invader without having lost a war. And we have a very, very, very able general on the other side in the White House. Never underestimate him. I've told you this for seven years now. He is the most able general of the left in history. He's more able than Marx and Lenin put together. Because he's smoother than them. And what he is accomplishing in this country, in this world, without firing a shot against the civilian population, is utterly astounding. Now, there are many reasons that Barry is able to get away with this. One, because he's brilliant. Two, because he's willful. Three, because he has a compliant, non-existent uh, fourth estate, better known as the news media. And that's where I come in. For 21 years, I've stood on this, not exactly this microphone, but a, a place like this in one of my studios. Day in, day out. Rain, shine, heat, sickness, health. And I've preached the gospel of borders, language, and culture. And let me tell you something. Many of you have heard the message, not the Republican Party, certainly, and we know that the Democrat, socialist, Islamist machine has heard the message, and they've said, the hell with our borders, the hell with our language, the hell with our culture. Flood them in. Bring them in. Let the army ants come. Let's change the demographics of America so we can bamboozle the public for the next hundred years. They're power mad. And I'll tell you something else. Here is another problem. A very uncomfortable problem that I have to mention. 
the entire Republican, the entire conservative media, with rare exception, has pushed the wrong message. And as a result, they've pushed women and minorities and gays into the Democrat fold. Instead of talking about borders, language, and culture, as I have done since 1994, they've been hammering abortion, gays, and women's rights, calling them feminazis, attacking gays, uh, talking about abortion. Now, these are important issues, but they're not the most important issues. The most important issues are the most fundamental issues, borders, language, and culture. And so when you have people on the radio who are hammering over and over again issues such as abortion, gays, uh, calling uh, the women's movement feminazis, you understand what that's done, don't you? It's driven many, many millions of women and young people away from the conservative message, away from the nationalist message, borders, language, and culture. Every fiber in my being wants to fight. I want to go out in the street and organize 10 million people to take over the country. I mean, I will not do it. We don't do that. We don't rebel in America. We don't have revolutions. We let the revolutionary in the White House take over the country and crap on everything decent. We let the left-wing vermin, the perverts, the anti-Americans, the anti-military, anti-family, anti-church, anti-God, anti-children, anti-decency, we let them take over. We don't fight. They do. We let them take over the media. We don't fight. We let them do it. We let all of the lowest take the highest positions. They sell us out. They undermine us. They stab us in the back. They undermine the cops with a Black Lives Matter bunch of rabble in the gutters of New York yesterday, re led by a, a vermin from Hollywood who made his fortune with violent movies, Tarantino, or Taranto, whatever his name is. Who pays attention to this, this drug-addicted fool? Can you imagine the day that they're burying a cop? A black cop at that, killed by a black thug at that, that the, the SS of our time, the SA of our time, the brown shirts of our time, Black Lives Matter marches in New York City against police brutality. And who's leading the parade? A white communist lout. A man who makes his fortune putting out one violent movie after another. So they fight. They've won. They've won one battle after another. I don't suggest that we're going to take over Hollywood. I don't suspect that they're going to change their tune anytime soon. I don't suspect that any day now they're going to wake up and say, holy God, we're just liable to be swept away ourselves if we don't stand up for the country. I don't expect that to happen. Business will go on as usual amongst these people. They don't even know what's going on around them. I don't expect a Boxer Rebellion in the United States. Look up the Boxer Rebellion. I've been to many double ten parades in San Francisco's Chinatown. I know what they are. Most Americans look at it, they think it's just funny with dragons marching in the street. Again, they look at the surface. They don't look at the substance of what the parade represents. They don't understand that the Chinese rebelled against Western influence. They rebelled against the opium. They rebelled against the missionaries who were basically stealing their own culture and religion. By the way, incidentally, and so I don't expect those things to happen here. But I do expect you to stop the Muslim invasion of America before it's too late. I do expect you to understand that the Republicans are in cahoots with Hillary. I do hope you understand that an entire generation has been numb by medication. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We're not outnumbered. We've been outsmarted. Oh, we've lost the battle, but we haven't lost the war. Germany would have won the war had it not been for sabotage performed by slave laborers in their defense plants. Their war plants, really. But the slave laborers didn't give up even though they were slaves. And you've given up? Well, you, you really have given up. What you've done is you say, eh, who cares? What am I going to do about it? It's all hot air. I can't do anything. That means you've given up. It means you're weaker than a slave. You've given up. You're not fighting Obama. You're not fighting the DNC. You're not fighting the Islamist, the Islamist front groups. You've given up. I haven't given up. We've lost the battle, not the war. The first article on this was published four days ago on World Net Daily. You can find it on the top of the Drudge Report. 
I'm sure it's being hit a thousand times an hour. I don't know how, how often people are reading this now. But I'm glad it went on to Drudge, and I want to thank Matt Drudge for this. Because the fact of the matter is I am the only member of the American media who is blacklisted. I am officially announcing that I am blacklisted. And you can thank those who own Fox News for having blacklisted me. They'll get along fine without me. And I'll get along fine without, without them because I have you. You understand that? They don't have you. They don't have you as a demographic. They don't care about illegal immigration. Or shall I say they're in favor of illegal immigration. I happen to know for a fact that the official party line inside Fox News is to never talk about illegal immigration. And number two, make sure that Hillary becomes the president. You may not know any of this. Shadows. Shadows on the wall. But the fact is, is that I have a different vision. I see what's going on. I see the invasion. I see what's going on in Germany. I see what Merkel has done to Germany. I see she's a traitor who should be tried for war crimes for what she's done to Germany. I read from a nurse's letter to a friend of mine. In a hospital near the Rhine, migrants, i.e., Syrian Muslims, African Muslims, attacked the staff with knives after they had handed over an eight-month-old on the brink of death, which they had dragged across half of Europe for three months. The child died two days later, despite having received top care at one of the best pediatric clinics in Germany. The physician had to undergo surgery, and two nurses are laid up in the ICU. Nobody has been punished. The local press is forbidden to write about this, but we know about it through email. This is all hidden information. What I am reading to you may as well have come through the underground press in World War II of what is going on. And then she asked, what would have happened to a German if he had stabbed a doctor and nurses with a knife? Or if he had flung his own syphilis-infected urine into a nurse's face and so threatened her with infection? At a minimum, a German would have gone to jail and later to court. With these people, nothing has happened. And so she says, I ask, why, where are all those greeters and receivers from the train stations sitting prettily at home, enjoying their nonprofits and looking forward to more trains and their next batch of cash from acting like greeters at the stations? If it were up to me, the nurse writes, I would round up, the, uh, round up all these greeters and bring them here first to our hospital's emergency ward as attendants, then into one building with the migrants so they can look after them there themselves without armed police, without police dogs, who today are in every hospital here in Bavaria, and without medical help. Is this situation coming to America, says a female physician in Munich, Germany, via a message to the world, being read for you for the first time in the American media on the Savage Nation. This has been a double banner day for me. I never expected this. It was a shock, by the way, to wake up this morning, given that I'm such an outcast and such a loner. When I saw that Matt Drudge had linked the cover of my book, yeah, it's still there, Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. And the article, Michael Savage declares we've lost the battle. And to top it off, underneath it, Republicans in cahoots with Hillary. And I click on it, it's about me from Breitbart. I never expected it. Never. No, I never thought this would happen. Never. Savage.